So we're talking episode six of Defending Jacob, where we see Andy's temper on full display, who's in the mysterious car, the news about Billy gets out, and does Jacob have the murder gene? We're going to talk about that and much more. Episode 6 of Defending Jacob was titled Wishful Thinking. Andy and Klein explore two last-ditch efforts to prove Jacob's innocence. Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot back again with my weekly spoiler discussion, recap, and review for the latest episode of Apple TV Plus, Defending Jacob. We're talking about episode 6, where we get uh, some really good information, some more of the same, but uh, really excited to break it down with you all in this spoiler discussion here before we dive into it as you all can see on the screen now make sure you're following me on all my other social media accounts if you're new to this channel definitely consider subscribing hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all my latest content make sure you give this video a thumbs up really helps out the channel but also really appreciate it and last but not least if and when you all have seen this episode of defending jacob let me know your pros your cons your theories and what you hope to see in next week's episode so again as i've been saying for the last six weeks this is a spoiler discussion so if you haven't seen the episode go check it out Come back and join the discussion. But if you've seen the episode like me, let's break it all down. So kind of initial thoughts. This was like I kind of mentioned a little bit more of the same of last episode. We do get some some reveals, some things told about Jacob and his, you know, the whole merging incident. And does he have it? We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, there's this mysterious car that's kind of stalking the Barber family. The news about Billy gets out. You know, there's definitely some some bigger moments in this episode that we're going to break down. There was also some things that I didn't really like. And we'll touch on that towards the end. But Kicking off things with the breakdown recap here, we see like one of the biggest things that definitely stood out to me with this episode was seeing Andy's uh, temper being displayed on uh, quite a few occasions. We've seen it a few times throughout the season, but this episode really kind of highlighted that. Uh, definitely he feels the pressure. He's on the clock with Jacob in the trial and everything. So you definitely see his his temperament go up and you and you find out why a little bit later in the episode in regards to maybe it's genetic in regards to his uh, temper and his, uh, you know, kind of quick fuse at moments. So first and foremost, the episode starts off with the cell phone situation. We see that Andy and uh, Joanna, they they have the, uh, you know, Ben's cell phone in their possession. They, uh, before, before they even get to that moment we see that the other attorney or the lawyer he, he tries to get under Andy's skin and he definitely does that uh, by calling out his father he asks about how his father's doing and, and Andy's just like what did you say and I'm just like oh cap whoop his ass cap give him the hands give him the one-two combination uh, obviously that wasn't that wouldn't be a good look for Andy but I'm just the inner me the inner Captain America Chris Evans me was just like I wish he would just lay him out uh, and he does somewhat get aggressive with him right? he pushes him against the wall uh, and he has he, he got Neil got the reaction he was looking for um um, and, and, and definitely kind of, you see, that was just one of many occasions or many examples of Andy's temper being uh, displayed. And again, it shows back, going back to what we're going to talk about in this review in regards to the murder gene and genetics and all that behavioral stuff. So we see the episode kind of kick off with that. They do spend about five or six hours, I think they said, in investigating the uh, uh, Ben's phone. They show us, you know, a bunch of text messages between him and his dad and his mom and just showing you know, it just kind of puts in perspective, like, you know, Andy's kind of realizing that this was just a, a kid, just like Jacob, you know, he's lost his life. Uh, and, and that's one thing that I think has been kind of, you know, you're seeing that on display from Andy. Of course, he wants his son to be proven to be innocent and trying to do everything he can to protect his son. But in, in the midst of all that, I think he's forgotten that there was a kid that was killed. You know, he's not really looking at it from the other side, right? He's just so focused on proving the innocence of his son rather than finding out the truth about who actually did it and really not looking at Jacob as a full suspect. So they're really kind of showing you that. And I think the show's been doing a really good job of that aspect in regards to just showing Andy just full head of steam of Jacob's innocence, Jacob's innocence, but at the same time forgetting that there's a kid that lost his life. So you see that moment there. Uh, Andy finds out that Jacob's been online again. We talked about this the last few weeks in regards to, you know, Lori going out and talking to the reporter or incidentally, but she was vulnerable and just kind of let things out. Uh, we know that Andy, or I'm sorry, we know that Jacob has been online. He's making that that new Instagram account or whatever. I love when shows kind of make like Instagram accounts or Facebook, and it's obviously not that. It's like something completely different. But one thing that I did not notice, and we're going to talk about this thing here in a bit, was, and this might have just been an oversight on my end, I didn't realize that that was Jacob that posted that picture of uh, American Psycho, uh, you know, uh, Patrick Bateman. I didn't know. I thought that was someone like, like making a post and just making fun of Jacob, but that was actually Jacob that made that post himself, which I'm just like, Jacob, what in the heck are you doing, my man? Like, are you trying to be found guilty? And that, that just goes back again 
to all of the evidence pointing to, uh, pointing towards Jacob having a darker side, right? They mentioned that last week with the cutter room. Uh, Sarah's mentioned that, you know, do you really know your son, all the different things. So it's showing you just like, there's, there's definitely a different side to Jacob. And we talked about this in the comments last week, which again, I appreciate all you guys' comments and watching these reviews. I'm having such a great time doing so, but we've been talking about this in the last couple of weeks in the comments in regards to that. There's something under Jacob, right? There's definitely some kind of scheming going on amongst the kids, amongst Leonard. And, and it's just something definitely there with Jacob. So we see, um, you know, he, he, makes that post but my man Andy went in on Jacob he just yelled at him saying are you stupid or do you just arrogant do you not understand the consequences of your of the, your actions just going in and then Lori's trying to get on Jacob's side I'm just like Lori you need to let this boy have it because he is definitely making some really silly decisions you know, calling Sarah, you know, what he called her last week after Sarah's is trying to be a friend for him, even though he looks at it as like, she just felt bad for him. Again, I think that Jacob deserved everything that Andy was telling him in the room. He kind of backpedaled a bit and then apologized and Andy tells, or Jacob tells him, okay, leave my room. I would have been like, boy, you leave, leave my house, man. Like, but anyway, we see that there's a, you know, Andy's definitely feeling that pressure. Again, another example of his temper being displayed in very much reason. So in, in both cases in my scenario, in my, uh, my opinion with him, his reaction towards Neil and his reaction towards Andy, I think it's justified. I'm not being biased because I'm a Chris Evans fan. I like this Andy character, uh, but I do kind of feel where Andy's coming from in regards to his reaction to some of these news. So we see all that play out. We see Lori's taking Jacob's sides. Like, Lori, come on. Uh, but the news finally gets out about Billy that there is a connection with this uh, kind of history in the family, right? We know the news comes out that Billy did murder someone and killed someone, and then obviously the news are putting their own spin to it, that it's just genetic, it's in the family, it's in the genes, and it's just, uh, it's not a coincidence that this happened. Uh, so that all comes out, and, and we see, um, you know, the repercussions uh, with that, but in the mix of all that, we see this, um, this particular vehicle, this mysterious vehicle outside of Andy's house. And Andy recognizes it and just kind of puts it in the back burner. But we see that car come back up and we'll talk about who was in that car and theories and all that stuff. But Andy gets another unknown call and everyone was like myself was just like, oh, Matt, just tell him what you know, dude. But we finally get that reveal. I'm glad they didn't uh, kind of overdraw that or draw that particular storyline out. So we see, you know, Matt meets Jacob at a restaurant and he pretty much tells him the story, which him and Leonard made this type of agreement where Leonard can fondle him and pay him money. And they did this about six or seven times. Uh, but then, you know, things kind of fell apart where uh, Leonard was saying that he's, you know, has his attention on someone else, which has been, which we see Matt, you know, tell him the news. And, you know, I, I'm really kind of confused to what to think about that story in regards to Matt. Obviously, he has a history about lying. Obviously, he likes he has a history about keeping things in. So it's very, very very interesting to see that story kind of come about and I would love to know what you all think about Matt's story do you believe him do you think there's some truth to what he's saying or do you think he's lying let me know your thoughts in the comments below but you know we see that whole play out and Leonard that he knew and we all know that Leonard did know uh Ben that he was taking pictures of Ben now as far as it being reciprocated in that relationship you know being symbiotic in regards to Ben and Leonard you know, had a relationship going. We don't know that quite yet, but we all know that Ben definitely, uh, or at least Leonard knew of Ben and definitely took pictures of Ben and deleted his pictures of Ben. So definitely, like I said, let me know your thoughts of what Matt told not only Jacob or uh, Andy, but told the rest of the DA. So let me know what you guys are thinking about that. So, you know, Billy, uh, we see that Billy calls Andy and I, again, Andy's kind of having a short fuse in this episode. He's just kind of fed up and, and definitely under the shot clock and under pressure. You know, he, uh, Billy tries to have some some small chit chat with his son. And Andy's just like, no, dude, I, I'm not having it. I'm number one. My son's on trial for murder. Number two, I haven't spoken to you in over 30 plus years. I don't know you. You're a murderer. You're not my dad. I don't feel bad for Billy whatsoever. Again, I love J.K. Simmons, but I'm totally, again, not being biased, guys, but everything, every reaction thus far that Andy has made in this episode, I'm totally on board with him. Again, I, I, I totally feel where he's coming from. So we see that moment play out there, but let me know if you guys are thinking that Andy's completely irrational and making some bad decisions in his temper, but let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments. So we see the police arrive. They have a warrant to go into Leonard's house. They don't find anything, but there are, I don't know if you guys noticed, there were pictures on the wall of Leonard's wall of cars. Now, I didn't, I haven't rewatched the episode. I don't know if one of those cars was the car that was outside of Jacob's or uh, the barber's house and that's been following them. Let me know if you guys maybe caught that. But I did see, like I said, it was a wall full of pictures. I don't know if there's some correlation there. So we see all that play out. They go into his house uh, and, you know, Leonard, man, Pat's is weird. 
he's a weirdo. Like, regardless if he murdered Ben or not, that guy is absolutely, the actor's doing a really good job of displaying the the kind of creepiness about that character. But, you know, they don't find anything in the house. Again, we see the show, um, we see them get the warrant and everything play out, but then we see that car again. And then we see that Lori's out doing her daily morning run and, and the car is chasing her and she escapes the car and goes in the house and tells Annie about it and, you know, uh, Duffy's talking to, to to Andy, which we'll talk about Duffy a little bit later in regards to her uh, her switched of, of of decision to help out Andy, where she was just so against it at first. But either way, we see that that car makes another appearance, and we're still thinking at this point, who's in the car? Who's following them? Is it is it connections to Billy? Is it someone else? A private investigator? Is it a reporter? We'll talk about that uh, here in a little bit. But we see Andy and Billy, they uh, you know kind of wrapping up the episode, uh, kind of the second back half of the episode. We see that Andy and Billy test positive for the murder gene, but Jacob doesn't, which is huge, right? But in the same kind of testing, the uh, psychologist tells them that he shares Jacob, Billy, and Andy share a particular genetic gene, which shows a very violent behavior gene that runs in Andy's family. Uh, his capacity to uh, really have empathy for situations is a concern from the therapist. And, you know, when the therapist was Andy asking Andy about, you know, Ben in the situation, she said that his 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 dialogue, his answers were, seemed very practiced and very kind of, you know, robotic. And it didn't seem like he had empathy in regards to the situation. So very interesting there in regards to, again, the psyche of Jacob, the darker side of Jacob, the lack of empathy of the situation, seeming like he's practicing his answers very interesting moment there again showing that other side of Jacob that the audience really hasn't seen yet but the the proof is starting to show in the pudding that the parents really don't know that much about Jacob or know the other side of Jacob so we see all that play out and we see Andy you know this far having his moments but Lori is going in at this point she's just like tell me what do you think do you think Jacob did it do you think he's innocent obviously the therapist can't really share her opinion on that which she says I can't tell you anything but that's that's really showing you know and in Lori as we have seen this this last few episodes and throughout the whole season she's starting to lean on the other side in regards to did her son kill Ben you know and that really kind of shows that within that moment and her not answering uh Lori's question really kind of answers it all right without saying it uh you know indirectly so after they celebrate Jacob's, I think it was his 15th birthday, they take him out to eat. You know, we see that car is parked out of the house once again. You know, again, we see Andy. Now, this was like when I was a little bit on the fence with Andy's temper. We see him grab a lug wrench out of the back. I was hoping that he didn't, you know, hit the guy or break his car. He didn't. But the guy in the car was very interesting, right? We never, at least to my knowledge, let me know if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've seen this character this far this season. He tells Andy to, you know, keep an eye on his family because, you know, not everyone has family, something of that nature. But just being very mysterious and very kind of, you know, bad guy type of vibe. So really interesting here, guys. I would love to know who you guys think that guy is in the car and, and in regards to who he's connected to. Is it a inside connection that Billy has? As we know, when Billy called Andy, he told him he has his connections. There's this whole ecosystem, how they get information. Is there some type of correlation to those characters and just like a friend of Billy's that, you know, keeping an eye on things or whatever the case may be. And maybe that, uh, um, agreement that him and Lori came about. Is it a reporter? Is it a private investigator? I'm trying to think of any other possibilities of who this can be connected to in regards to who we know in the story. Uh, is it someone connected to Ben's family? Is it someone connected to Sarah's family? I mean, there's so many possibilities. Let me know who you guys think that mystery that mystery guy was in the car. Let me know in the comments below. So uh, we see Andy say that they hit the iceberg, kind of wrapping up the episode in that current timeline trial that he's in with uh, Neil. Uh, Jacob is is, you know, has a suit on, they get in the car, there's a bunch of press, and Jacob, again, kind of not l lack of empathy or emotion, but he just seems pretty cool, calm, and collective. He said many times in his episode, he kind of knows how the press looks at him, he knows what he's doing, things of that nature, so it's showing that other side of Jacob that he he knows more than he's leading to with his parents and everyone involved, so really, really interesting episode, um, you know, like I said, the episode wraps up with Jacob and them driving to court, so I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's only an eight episode season. So we're only, we only got two episodes left. Correct me if I'm wrong. It might be nine, but I think it's eight. Uh, but if it is eight, you know, we only got two episodes left. And, you know, in regards to some criticism I had about this episode, there was a particular scene that I just thought was kind of not organic, kind of didn't fit within the tone. We see Andy hits, Le again, another example, Andy's uh, uh, temper. We see him hit Leonard's car and they get out of the car and he yells out, you know, he, he's like, um, you know, I know what you did. I know what you did. Like, I thought that that scene could have been completely cut out. Honestly, I didn't 
didn't think it really helped anything other than showing the the pressure that Andy's under and his temper being displayed in this episode. But I thought that that scene just didn't feel right to me. It just didn't feel organic and natural to the tone of the show and kind of the characteristics. Again, I get what they were going at, but I just that scene didn't play well with me. Uh, and also, too, there's a particular dynamic that I'm kind of missing so far, and, and not just epi- this episode, but I think it shows in this episode. We've seen more of the family being broken apart than we've seen of the family coming together and being lovey. I know we get that within the first episode, but things really, really pick up within the first episode, right? Of him being, you know, this whole murder and everything. So we, it's just kind of a weird dynamic that again, we've seen the family be more broken apart than we've seen them together. So when we, you know, when you see those moments when they're sharing, you know, quieter moments, celebrating his birthday, it's just like, I wish that we've gotten more of those moments so we can really, really feel how the family feels at this moment, how they feel broken up. But that's just a little criticism so far of the overall season and the family dynamic for me personally. Let me know if you guys feel a little bit of that as well. And then a little minor issue, they didn't really have to have a scene showing this, but I would have liked to have some type of dialogue at least with Duffy now feeling that she has to help Jacob and help Andy. Again, she was very adamant and about you we're not friends you know I don't know why you think we're friends I don't, I'm not willing to, I'm not willing to risk my job to help you out but then we don't see how what, what, what was that switch I mean obviously she's a human being she probably feels for the family but she made it clear that she doesn't want to risk her job and risk her career over helping Andy in this situation but we've seen the last few weeks she gives him the information on on Leonard we see that she's kind of telling him information that, he, that she shouldn't be telling him so I just that the whole Duffy thing is just kind of that switch I wish we would have got like I said it doesn't have to be a whole full out five minute scene but I wish they would have had that dialogue she'd be like hey I'll help you out Annie and XYZ this is why I'm helping you out again she had mentioned that her brother was maybe in a similar situation to uh, Andy and his dad but she didn't really elaborate on that but that's just like a minor thing but either way again whether it be uh, two episodes or three episodes left Things are going to have to start, you know, some answers, some questions are going to have to be answered pretty soon in regards to what really went down with Ben, what's the connection with Leonard, who's the guy in the car, you know, what happened in the current timeline with this current trial between Andy and Neil, where's the family, where's Lori, where's Jacob, we're going to have to start getting answers, but I'm still 100% on board with this show, I've really been enjoying the performances and the story so far, so that's my recap, my breakdown, my review, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this latest episode, what are your theories, what are you hoping to see in episode 7, who do you think is in the car? What do you think about Leonard? What do you think about Matt? Let's have some fun discussions like we always do in the comments below. So as always, thank you for supporting this uh, this channel. We are less than maybe 15 subscribers away from 3,000, which is insane. I can't thank you guys enough for the support. I do plan on doing like a live uh, Ask Me Anything type of stream. A live stream so definitely uh, keep an eye out for that I do have a live watch along with some friends of mine we're celebrating the five-year anniversary of Mad Max Fury Road that's tonight 7 p.m. Central Time so if you have the movie uh, if you can rent it stream it definitely join us tonight even if we don't have the movie we're gonna have some fun discussions about action movies about Tom Hardy movies Charlie Theron we're gonna talk about a lot of other stuff so just still just join the conversation because it's gonna be a fun time tonight tonight that's 7 p.m. Central Time uh, there are some other shows I'm gonna be watching this weekend on Netflix and on Hulu, so keep an eye out for that content. As always, thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you soon.